Welcome to the fifth part of the Keyhole software tutorial on EXTJS single page applications. In this tutorial, we'll go over the controller that powers this pop up window. As a reminder, this pop up window is one that takes a model from the grid and puts its data into these different form fields. Now, there's one controller and one view, but there's two different real ways that this controller can be used. It can be used either in the add context or the edit context. When I'm editing, it should be able to pull data from the grid and populate these fields. But when I'm adding, what it should do is not really pull anything from anywhere, just create sort of a stub that when I save it, gets put back into the grid. So if we switch over to our code, this form controller encapsulates this pop-up windows controller. It looks, in principle, similar to what we've seen in the previous controller. It extends app controller. It has an alias, if you want to know one. We've also set up these views and the model. Now, the model it uses is the same as the one as the previous controller, but because this is a form, I'm only viewing one model at a time. So I don't need to use the store as an intermediary to my model because there's only one that I can be looking at at any given time. The view it uses will also go into the next tutorial and it looks sort of similar to what the previous view we looked at does. It has the same concept of reps so that I can pull this very specific button and give it this well-defined name so that I can attach events to it, um, do all sorts of things. It also has these private member variables that we set up right here. In JavaScript, there's really no notion of public, private, or protected. It's going to be something that you just have to document. Um, traditionally, what MediaXDJS controller looks like is all of my base config options will be at the top. Next will be a list of the member variables that the controller uses. And then finally, all of my methods. So what we can see here is that it doesn't have an init method. We had to do this because of the add and edit case. The controller that represents the grid first creates my form controller, and that will call init. But as soon as it creates it, it, the creation is done during the controller's initialization itself. So there really has been no action done by the user. We have to wait until one of those buttons are clicked, and we don't really know which button the user clicks until the user clicks it. So what we've done in our previous controller is created an instance of this class and then we bind the add and the edits with methods that will call this show method. Values is the model data that the user either selected from the grid and clicked edit or it will just be blank and it doesn't actually contain anything to represent our app case. This is what you can see down here. If I do have values, then it pulls out my form using my well-defined getter and then sets the data. If I don't have it, then my form is just created blank. doesn't have anything. The creation of the form is done in this first part to where I pull out my constructor, I create an instance of it, and then I show it. Then this sort of takes the place of my init. I add my events down here. So I know that my view is going to close. If it's a modal window, it can either be closed by the X or it can be closed by the cancel button. This is why I always call this method. Um, ESTJS is an event driven framework. It allows for events to come in from really any different place and a standard way of listening to them is this on method. So as soon as close gets fired on my view, my controller can pick that up. Events really represent the way that our controllers and views can communicate with each other without having to know that they're communicating with each other. It allows for that sort of separation of concerns, but still maintainable and still a way that it's easy for a programmer to read and understand what exactly is going on. The rest of the methods in here are for you know, very specific tasks that the controller has to do. And we'll go into those tasks in a little bit further detail in the next tutorial. So just as an overview, in this tutorial we've gone over the form controller that represents the pop-up window. In the next, we'll go over very specific details of what it does.